This joint was inhabitable. You could mm -hmm. not live here. The back of the house was falling off. Mm -hmm. Me and my crew came in here and bought, bought the big joists and had to replace four joists on the back of the house because it was falling off, mm -hmm. you know? And brought the big crane and all that stuff, man. I mean, and I did everything from top to bottom is my work. People will compliment us and thank us. Was never, I never get tired of that because it shows me that we have done something and and we're doing something for the city that makes me feel so good because mm -hmm. I've already been one of them type of people who I try to help people all the time. Some people can't be helped. Now, if I see that you can't be helped, I get away from you quick. <laughs> so, so I don't have to say nothing out the way and then cause a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like the bandstand. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with Mr. DeAndre Howard today. One of my oldest friends in the DC area. So, DeAndre, how did you get into music? So music was around 24 hours a day. My mother used to always wake us up from school by getting on the upright piano and playing. And then she would always sing and play for me, girl from Ipanema and so many stars. Mm. Cause I was around music all the time. We had, like I said, uh, Bo Diddley's come to the house. Uh, you know, I mean, Muddy Waters. We had all these people just coming over our house all the time. All the number one bands in DC. They all the musicians, because our house up there, East Capitol, Kentucky Avenue was known as the music house. Mm -hmm. I met Chuck Brown way back in the day. He knew me, you know, he said, boy, I remember you when you couldn't play. Everybody always said, I remember when you couldn't play the mm -hmm. trumpet. I said, why y'all always got to say when I couldn't <laughs> play? <laughs> So how long did you apprentice with different bands before you started your, your first group? Ooh, let's see. Started playing professionally, I guess, at 15, when I was playing at Moore's Love and Peace up the street, up the street here. That's when my jazz career started. Mm -hmm. And I used to always say, because Shirley Horn, Keita Betts, Bill Harris, all Lonnie Wells, all used to come down to hear my group play. Mm -hmm. And I was a rookie. I didn't know nothing about no jazz, man. By the time I was 30, I formed my own band. Mm -hmm. All that, the utopia is, I, I was there for, Wayne said I was there for 20 years or 21 years. It was a long time, don't you? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. That's right, that's right. It was, a, it was a great, I mean, every time if somebody was in town, I would say, hey man, you need to go down to Utopia. That's like what they tell you me, know? they say Reg, or somebody told them to come here. Mm -hmm. And when I would go up to Boston, you know, when we uh, take our vacation, we go to the house of Boston, and I go to the jazz clubs, and I take my horn, and I send, they say, what's your name? I say, it's DeAndre, after I play. And they, you know, they say, you ain't the, uh, the DeAndre from DC, from the Utopia. I say, yeah, that's me. Oh man, I've been trying to get that. I'm like, wow, you know, and I go, out of any town, the jazz lovers, they all heard about the Utopia. Mm -hmm. When Cass would leave twins, Larry Willis, he lead twins, mm -hmm. Blues Alley with the Fort Apache man. Mm -hmm. They all come, come by on. that. You know, did you coin that, fa that phrase, that utopia, jazz, jazz, jazz? Oh, yeah. Because every Friday night we that came was, there, it was like, the, that, the audience just loved it every time. And now when you it. hear the people, you hear the people saying that, 
and it continues to tickle me because if I got there early, like we didn't start to like 11 o'clock, 11.30, if I got there like 10 o'clock or 10.30, just hanging around, as soon as I walk the door, you hear somebody holler out, jazz, jazz, jazz. <laughs> or as I'm walking back through the audience, walking to the back, I be some fine girls at the table and they say, oh, that's a jazz, 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 man. Like in the summertime, if I'm standing out front of the club and talking to somebody that's out there, people ride by and holler out, jazz, jazz, jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, my neighbors say, we can tell when you out front because everybody's hollering your name or hollering jazz, mm -hmm. you know. Outside of Utopia, many of those conversations, you know, on the breaks, you know, mm -hmm. after the session, you spoke about, you know, leading, having your own club. How did it come about where you and, and, and Dr. Alice sat down and talked about creating one of the most important venues in the D.C. area? Well, those two boards out front with the mural paint on it, that was all glass. Mm. And I had just sold my house in Baltimore, came down, living around the corner with my sister, mm -hmm. you know, renting from her, and a storm blew one of the windows out. And it was a Saturday morning, you know, it was Friday night, and that Saturday morning, I was around here, one of them, you know, women got the little teeny toy brooms, trying to pick up that big, heavy, concert, you know, uh, commercial glass. And my sister was walking the dogs and she came back and said, hey, bro, you need to wake up. That lady around there um, picking up some glass and she needs help. She's an elder, she needs help. I said, I'm sorry, sis, I help people all the time. And we had that one night after the Utopia, after the gig's over, you don't leave the Utopia till 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then it was like 7 in the morning. I said, I can't go. Sis kept calling me and say, you need to go around there. So I went around there. When I came around the corner, I would say, her and me say, oh, that's DeAndre. We see him at Westminster. Mm -hmm. I said, how y'all doing? I said, my sister tell me, you got a problem. She said, yeah, this glass broke. I said, well, I cleaned it up. Took the glass out, got in my car, went and got some boards and built the frame and boarded it up. And then I, I said, you know, and she said, well, let me show you the bill. She showed me in here, no ceiling holes, water leaking everywhere. And no, wasn't no kitchen. I built, put that wall up. Mm. And then showed me upstairs, the front apartment, open door, raccoons on that joint. Had to mm. shut the door. And, you know, and I said, well, this night, what you trying to do with this joint? She said, since I've been a little girl, I've always wanted to open up a non-alcoholic jazz club. Mm. I feel back like this. Mm. And she thought I was having a heart attack or something wrong. She said, you all right? I said, you never believed this, but since I was 27, the exact words you said, not exact order, is what I said. We became partners to build this place. And then she said, well, what, what would you want to live upstairs? I said, I would have to live, live on the property because I said, I'm too old. Or as I say, uh, I'm at this advanced age <laughs> where I ain't trying to do a whole bunch of driving. Mm -hmm. Oh, the artwork comes from Alice, Dr. Alice's collection, my collection. And then once people saw we had all this great art in here, people just donate art. You know, that one thing she said, she said, well, you're, you're gonna be living there in the apartment upstairs and you run the club. Mm -hmm. And she didn't mind. That's why some nights, you know, you see her hanging around all night after we closed. Mm -hmm. She just like sit down and just be sitting smiling because that's what she remembers about the old days, you mm -hmm. see in the movies where all the musicians, and she would love it, you know, everybody's gone, the door's shut, but the lights on, the bar's open. Mm -hmm. Other musicians on their way to a gig, coming from a gig, see it open, they stop, they come in. It's kind of like a new utopia. Exactly, <laughs> it's exactly like what it was, and she dug that big mm -hmm. time, man. And I said, well, that was about it, and I said, this is how the youngins, I'm trying to teach the youngins what I have learned, mm -hmm. you know sitting around just talking some cats get up and play like when nose here the gigs over he he get there and start playing the piano mm -hmm. he start just singing and just just having fun quietly mm -hmm. you know without no pressure of an audience like what are you gonna play just play Mayor's office called me, man. I was like, wow. You know, but you know, people, a lot of people don't know 
when they got something good until it's gone. Mm. Then when it's gone, then, oh, what happened, what happened? And people were saying, well, why are you gonna leave? I said, well, I'm, I'm older, you know, and I can't do everything I used to do, and mm. I'm tired. You went from mentoring musicians in the bandstand to creating a room where all different types of bands to come through mm -hmm. and perform. So how does it feel now that you've accomplished all of these different things? I mean, do you feel like you've, you know, lived your dreams by running this spot for the last five years? Yep, I, I live my dream and I have, I have several more chapters, mm. you know. What more could you ask for? Mm. I mean, you, you, you learn how to play an instrument and and then your hometown, you were born in this town, and you wind up making a legacy here. It's fun, man, it's been a beautiful journey. And it ain't over yet. Mm -hmm.